of course, it's a huge honor. And uh, it was a slightly strange occasion in the morning because I got a call from my, my uh, <coughs> PA, Petrona Winton, who, who said she'd got this strange message and they didn't, went, she wasn't allowed to talk about it and all that. So uh, it was all deadly secret at that time. And finally, when I went and had a shower because I couldn't, you know, I didn't know what to go on. So they called me up. I was afraid Shelley would call me up and I actually stark naked. And then I'd have to say, what were you actually doing at the time? It wasn't quite like that, but uh, but I, it, 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 I suppose there was some expectation that, um, I don't know, I, I wasn't expecting to, um, for this event to happen, no, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it at all. I mean, black holes are, ex are important in all sorts of ways, which I think are becoming revealed only relatively recently, certainly in the formation of matter, galaxies and things are uh, very dependent on the black holes in their centers, but they're also important because they are the reservoir of what you might call of the entropy in the universe. So one of the most important laws of physics we have is this thing called the second law of thermodynamics, which tells us that entropy increases, where entropy is in very rough terms a measure of randomness. So it's a sort of pessimistic law, if you like. It says things are getting more and more random as time goes on. But where does that randomness go? Well, when you have gravitating bodies, the randomness goes into them clumping together. And the, the, where they clump most is in black holes. And according to this formula due to Bekenstein and Stephen Hawking, one has a very precise formula for the entropy in a black hole. And that entropy is absolutely huge. And for the black holes, as we keep observing bigger and bigger ones, we realize that the amount of entropy in the black holes absolutely swamps everything else. I think it's a bad thing. If, you, if you've got you know, great ambitions to do science or something, it's a bad thing to get a Nobel Prize too early. I know people who got their prizes I would consider too early and it, and it spoiled their science. So I think if you're going to get a Nobel Prize for science, it's a good thing to get it good and old before you're absolutely, you know, clapped out, I suppose. But, but, but um, well, there's still something to do. Um, but don't get it too early. That's my, that's my advice to people. <laughs> no, I, it was a great honor to get it. And uh, the work certainly went back to something I did in 1964. But then the significance of black holes took a long, long time to become realized. So it's not surprising that... Uh, and a lot of other things of importance in the way and very much deserved uh, 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 Nobel Prizes were awarded in the meantime. So I have no, I think it's great. I have no problems about getting it. And I think I'm just about old enough. I think, you know, I'm only in my 90th year, so I guess that's okay. <laughs>